you're after a new family workhorse. You're faced with a dead simple choice. You can either buy an old banger and save the money for a rainy day, or you can blow the piggy bank and get the best thing that you can afford. Option one will probably bring you somewhere like this. Volvo 940 Estate in green. I bought it last week for 695 quid, and let me tell you, it was a steal. Option two, the one that involves emptying your savings account, could get you something like this. A Renault Modus. Bought it also last week for four and a half grand, and it is also a steal. Imagine these two cars collide head-on, each travelling at 40 miles an hour. Think about you and the person you care most about in the whole world being involved in a crash. The question is, which one would you prefer to be in? Big old banger or state-of-the-art modern car? The estate that looks like it's built from girders or the super mini SWAT that's passed its safety exams with flying colours? In a few minutes, these two cars will be hurled together at a closing speed of 80 miles an hour, which is going to come off best. Of course, the Volvo was built in a time before NCAP even existed, so it's got no official safety rating. But it has got one thing on its side, size. How can something as dainty as the Modus ever stand up to a collision with this Scandinavian brute? At one and a half tonnes, the Volvo is ready to plough through anything in its path. Well, the Modus may look cute, but it's actually exceptionally strong in the body. When they crashed this thing into a concrete block at 40 miles an hour for the frontal impact test for Euro NCAP, this driver's footwell didn't deform at all. Jesus, monkey! The overhead view shows how easily the very stiff Modus punches through the Volvo. While the nose of the Modus has mostly kept its shape, the Volvo has crumpled and half its nose has just disappeared. It's extremely hard to make small cars safe, but the Modus is constructed using very high-strength steel that channels the energy through the sides and subframe rather than the occupants. That Modus has basically used the entire front side of this Volvo as, as another crumple zone. Look at this door, if you can call it a door. It's pushed the whole of the front of the car up into here. The dash has moved backwards. You can't even see his feet. That means his legs have been crushed. All of the steering wheels moved. Obviously, there's no airbag. So the chances are he's probably impacted the steering boss, which is head injuries. If we come back over to the Modus, we've actually got a door. We're going to have to open it a bit like that, but... So look, this guy's completely got his lower legs. He may have some lower leg injuries, but they're a lot less severe than the person in the Volvo. The airbags have deployed for both the driver and the passenger over there, meaning they probably haven't got head injuries or chest injuries. Traditionally, the heavier car is always deemed to hold the advantage in a head-on crash. We've shown it may be time to rethink that convention.